In the River Kwai. There you go. That's uh, the, the bridge to Terabithia? Hey, that's my favorite Any one. Any other bridges? Except for Jeff Bridges. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like Jeff Bridges? Sure. Yeah. Jeff Bridges Twitter. Oh, I love Jeff. I'm a big fan of Lloyd, too. Yeah. And Bubba. <laughs> love Todd. Hashtag GMFB. Tweet the show. We're presented by Intuit <laughs> Clipbooks. It's Thursday, December 27th. It is the last hour. My name's Kate, Nate Burleson, Peter Schrager, mm -hmm. Kyle Brandt, as always. Final week of the regular season. There is so much to play for, so much up in the air when it comes to the playoffs. So let's break down Week 17's most crucial matchups mm. with a little th 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 throwdown. Let's do it. Thursday. Minnesota currently sitting in the sixth seed in the NFC. With a Vikings loss, though, and a Philly win, the defending champs would be in the playoffs. So who would be a scarier wild card team, guys? Vikings or Eagles? And don't use recency bias for the fact that we just had all four of work on Stop. this. I'm going to use recency bias on the last few weeks, though. I think yeah. the Eagles are playing as good as anybody in the entire NFL. And the way I look at it, it's which team is coming in hotter, which team is coming better. Now, the Vikings have won two straight games. Don't get me wrong. They're playing good. But the Eagles have beaten the Rams in L.A., and then they beat a Texans team that had everything to play for, still had a home playoff game and a divisional buy, divisional round buy at stake. So I would say this. I would say that the Eagles are the team that not only between the Vikings, maybe even the entire NFC, I would least want to see walking that really? building. They have a Super Bowl in their back pocket. They've already done it. They've been there before, and they've overcome the odds already. And I would not want to see Nick Foles walk into my building come January. It's just something I would not want to deal with. I kind of feel the same way. You know, in hockey, you never want to run into a hot goalie. You never want to run into Martin Brodeur or Dominic Hasek or K's guy Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh! Uh, I feel Waugh the same way. I, I, I don't want to run into a hot quarterback. I, I think the Vikings are probably the more complete team. Okay. I just don't want to run into Foles. I've seen guys in 2011, the Giants were a very flawed team, and Eli just Great got point. hot. Great point. Joe Flacco got hot one year, and they could have beaten anybody. I'd rather I'd, I'd rather face a, maybe a more complete team than the hot quarterback. I don't want any piece of Foles right now. The Dominic Hasek of the NFL. So you guys are talking about Nick Foles, and I get it. He has the book. And I just pulled this off your shrine. I'll put it back. That's okay, I'm Nate. Bring down the tone They're going to smite oh, you. Um, it says, <laughs> my journey of success failure and overcoming the odds yeah I feel like with everything you guys said there's an application to the Minnesota Vikings mm -hmm. now Kirk Cousins has been doubted even though he made you know X amount of dollars as a Redskin and so many dollars as a Minnesota Viking we still knock him and talk poorly about him you mentioned it earlier in the show it's, it's easy it's like low-hanging fruit oh he hasn't won the big game yeah and you came on and said, well, he has one big game. He's played really well in them, and he hasn't won. I will agree with both of you guys, but I think we all realize that this is the biggest game of his career. The biggest game so of his life, I think. The biggest game of his life. But he has to be hearing the doubts. He has to be hearing what we've been saying about him week after week when he drops a game to Russell Wilson, when he drops a game to Tom Brady on the road. Now it's time. It's almost like he's living his own version of a Nick Foles story because he's being doubted as much as a backup quarterback would. Mm -hmm. So why, could, why can't he come in and have his team rally around him when he has Rudolph, who's playing unbelievable, Good. by his side? Stephon Diggs, Stealing, the running back. That one could fast. Eagles or Vikings? Who's scarier? <laughs> I'm going to say the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> because now we're all so caught up on this Nick Foles train. You know what? He might do it again. Okay, I get it. But you don't think the Minnesota Vikings are hearing all this doubt and there's nothing worse than a team that's mad at the world. And if I'm the Minnesota Vikings, with what happened last year, how close they were, the yeah. up and down of the season, for lack of better words, they should be pissed off okay. about where they are and what people are saying about them. So that's why we should look at this team as dangerous. And we don't use words like dangerous mm -hmm. when we talk about Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kirk Cousins, now it's time for you to embrace the word dangerous. Play dangerous out there. Okay. All right, my when, man. When you say the Vic or the Eagles are the more complete team. No, the Vikings are more complete. The Vikings, yeah, that, yeah. I'm, that's why I, they're scarier to me. Yeah. I look at that Eagles secondary. And if I'm Trubisky, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want a Eagle secondary that's still not scary. I do not want a defense with the Vikings that in the second half of the season has been better than everybody. Mm -hmm. So as far as being a complete team, as far as trusting the talent that you mentioned on the offensive side of the ball, if Kirk Cousins can bring it together, the offensive line to me is the only issue on that team. So I, because one of these teams is going to face the Bears in the first round, right? So yeah. most likely, I would rather face the Eagles Head on head with that secondary than a more complete Viking squad. Like Nick Foles just threw another touchdown. They're more dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Two of the most electric back, young man. quarterbacks square off on Sunday when the Browns put that back. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'll wait for you to get back. All right, also, go ahead. I hear you, Kay. Go the ahead. Browns take on the Ravens. Who yeah. is more dangerous right now, Baker Mayfield or Lamar Jackson? Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, both, both these guys. 
Is that Josh Baskin next to Lamar, <laughs> Lamar Jackson up in Rye? Um, I look at, let's just do a hypothetical, all right? Um, you're down five points, there's 45 seconds left, and you got a fourth and goal from the nine. Do you want Baker or Lamar? Um, I'm going to go with Lamar. I, I know that Baker is the dangerous guy, and Baker's hot, and the Browns are hot. The, Rams, the Ravens, rather, are really hot, too. And I just think that I look at Vince Young going up against USC in the goal line. Everybody's covered. The pass rush comes. Lamar can still score. He's that athletic. He has something that Baker doesn't have. He, if Baker can't do that like he can. Mm. Maybe Baker throws it better. And maybe he has an X factor. I don't know if Lamar has the it that Baker has. But given his mobility and his talent and his speed, I'm still going to go with Lamar Jackson. Baker Mayfield's like Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous. But I'm going to have to agree with you. It would be yeah? dismissive of what... Lamar Jackson has done up to this point, um, lifting his franchise, not that Baker Mayfield hasn't. Um, the fact that they are the more uh, well-respected rushing team in a day and age where it's all about passing yeah. the ball yeah. and everything's starting yeah. to seven on seven. This is old school, ugly football. This is early 90s. This is early 80s. This might be early 70s, the way they run the ball <laughs> and that defense. When I was listening to Eric Weddle talk after they beat the Chargers, he's old school. He's been through it. He got the beard. There was something about him that was childlike. To be honest, I haven't seen him in quite some time. He's always positive. He's always optimistic. And he's always a leader. I haven't seen him smile like that in years. And it was almost like a kid with a new toy. And he's sitting next to this toy that is a Ferrari with a strong engine. And you just want to sit there and drive this car. And this guy could drive his team close to the uh, Super Bowl. And I I'm not being dramatic, but okay. Schrager, you talked about it. We've all hit it at one point over the last couple weeks. The recipe for success in January is a quarterback to take care of the ball you got to run the ball down team's throat aggressively mm -hmm. in a defense that can bloody up the game. We're talking about old-school, bruise-up offensive players. And that's the Ravens, dude. And they weren't doing that with Flacco. They're doing that with Lamar Jackson. Here's the scary part about Lamar Jackson. We've seen uh, all these great plays. He had the big pass to Mark Andrews. We haven't seen the big moment. Yeah. We haven't seen the big run yet. He's chipping away. He's chipping away. It's a nine-yard run here, ten-yard yeah. run. Yeah. It's coming. And that's going to be the dangerous part. Remember when Michael Vick made that run against Go, the Mike Vick! And he just went and yeah. won in overtime. Yeah. Remember when even recently Vince Young had those games where against the Giants he just evaded the Deshaun oh, right. Jackson, his rookie year, had that long one right before halftime. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, we haven't seen the big Lamar play yet. And that is something that is so dangerous that Lamar can just, just bolt. And I spoke to him last, last Friday afternoon and I said, when's that coming? He's like, the players are faster in the NFL, but I have that in my arsenal. We haven't even gone to that yet. Ooh. So they're chipping away, they're chipping away, they're chipping away. And he's making runs like this, which is awesome against Atlanta. A 12-yard boot. Let's go into the run. What's the 65-yarder? Let's see the 65-yarder. Yeah. Let's see the 70-yarder. Yeah. That's what makes him so dangerous. That on the flip of a switch, he can just game break. Because of all the Ravens on that team, offense and defense, and there are studs everywhere, he is the only true playmaker yeah. on that roster. And we haven't even seen his greatest play yet. It's coming. Lamar Jackson. I would have to give Baker the edge just because we have seen it from him. We've seen him put this team on his back. He has four game-winning drives this year. We have not yet seen that. Mm. From Lamar right. Jackson. I'm not saying it's not coming. But both, this is going to be a great game. I think I said Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun uh, Watson. Deshaun Watson. Watson. Correct. The Rams myself. and the Chiefs have both clinched a spot in the playoffs. Both teams have lost two of their last three games, though. So, Nate, which team needs a decisive Week 17 win more, the Rams or the Chiefs? It seems like these guys both need it because, um, just like Kyle was saying about the Chiefs, the energy isn't there. They have to fix something, correct it, and catch a momentum, catch a rhythm. And then you have the Rams who had Todd Gurley on the sideline. Mm -hmm. So you want to see your superstar running back get some type of rhythm going. But I feel like it's the Chiefs. Mm. There has to be a confidence about Sean McVay that, you know, you can't really coach. Like, these guys have it. Like, he talks to his team, and they're motivated from within. When you have a young quarterback like Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid with the history he has in the playoffs, we talked about it, all of those losses dating back to Joe Montana yeah. since their last playoff win, I think they need it more than anybody. They might need it more than any team in the postseason because at one point we were all saying they will win the Super Bowl. And then at other points of the season, towards the end, we're like, is this a Super Bowl team? Right. Or is this the same old Chiefs? I don't want that mindset mm -hmm. and that last question I asked to creep into the mindset of the players because it will. I saw the get-right game from the Rams last week. They could have beaten the Cardinals by 100 points. They at least put my heart at ease, and I know that – Todd Gurley's coming back. He's going to be great. We know that at least this offense is going to get back on track because they showed it last week. 
Chiefs defense, I, you know, it, there's not going to be some magical fairy dust put on this That's thing. Fair. So for me, the Chiefs defense going into this game against Oakland, if you can put the clamps on them, at least it's a little sense of confidence. You know, is Sammy Watkins walking into that door? We don't know. Mm -hmm. hey, Kareem Hunt's not coming back. Like, this team has not been the same over the last few weeks. Talk so about it. I would say the Chiefs need to have a decisive win to at least rest their nerves a little bit that they are the same team they were in September, October. Yeah. So funny things happened this morning. Uh, maybe an hour ago, we were talking about the same topic, and I was talking about the Chiefs losing streak in the playoffs, and saying Arrowhead Stadium is one of the great characters in the league, and I love it. I want to see them get over, and I'm rooting for them. Uh, someone on Twitter directed me to Larry Johnson, the Chiefs running back, yep. apparently is watching and shot a video of it and telling me to shut up, and I don't know what I'm talking <gasps> about, and it's not about the fans, it's about the players. And first of all, Larry, I loved you as a player. A guy would have 35 carries, like it was no big deal. Love him. Um, but I still stick my point. I, I still think that this idea that you don't want to go to Arrowhead in January is, is a myth of a bygone era that the players, fans, whatever it may be, right. don't back up. I'm not attacking the fans. They have an incredible atmosphere, incredible yeah. tradition. All they do, the decibels, the barbecue is great. And then the team shows up and wins and they saying go. They have to prove it. They, they have gotta to do something that. about right. it. I want them to yeah. do that. And it's, all I'm saying is that, yes, it has become a running joke. The Chiefs win in the regular season and lose at Arrowhead in the postseason. The other 31 teams are laughing about them. Ha ha, people yeah. used to think you don't go to Arrowhead. Now you do yeah. and you win. And I hope they change that. But that's just objective. That's not me going on my land. That's just, just facts. Yeah. Chiefs, I hear you on that. This is a must win game for them. Looking at the ramification, guys, they, it's tailspin time if they lose this one. If they would drop to the five seed, if the Chargers beat the Broncos, and they would have to go on the road likely to face Baltimore in the first round. So I think things would get messy yeah. real quick. Got to beat those Raiders. Finally, the Niners take on the Rams on Sunday. So better body of work, gentlemen. San Francisco's Tom Hanks or from Los Angeles. <laughs> Oh, young guys. Oh. Well, look at young Hanks. Well, way too young for me to make that cute Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> face. Easy there. It's growing pains. Yeah, it almost might be. Um, I, I did the, the math on this. Yeah. I went through all their, their, their movies and how many bangers, how many just great ones. Talk about got. it. I got Hanks at 18, that's and that's that. not even counting Toy Story 4 and Mr. Rogers, which is coming out. I got DiCaprio at 12. Yeah. And he's much younger, and I'm going to give DiCaprio credit. He's always great in his choices. DiCaprio doesn't have a Cloud Atlas or a Larry Crown. A or the, he won't bottom out. He makes great choices. Yeah. So at 12, much younger, I'm going to go with Leo. Oh. Leo. Quality over quantity. Yeah, and I think he'll get the quantity as he gets Hank's age. I gotta go. I love Hank's. Hank's got the Leo. quantity and the quality. Yeah, I he's got, it's great. It's I look quite, at that run. I mean, it's like almost like Aaron Rodgers uh, here, that little run where he was just the best quarterback for that many years. I mean, no. when you go. Come on. Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Talk about Apollo it. 13, Talk about it was just banger, banger, banger. I love Leo. Uh, it, yeah, Belichick yeah. Brady, is Leo who Leo is without Scorsese? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Listen, I, I'm going to say this. He needs Scorsese. Or hey, he did have beaches. Uh, the beach. You know what I'm saying? The beach. Beach, whatever beaches was Bette Miller. That's a great topic. We should do that. I love beaches. Yeah, the beach is good. The beach. Here, here's yeah, another hot I take. I didn't count it as a banger. I'm not a big Titanic fan. I'm just throwing it out there. That's fine. And... <laughs> If you look at the two, the, the movies that they were in together, Catch Me If You Can. Okay. I'm going to say that Tom Hanks brought it home. You thought he won? Actually, yeah. without, without Frank Abagnale fan. You I feel me? Frank <laughs> Abagnale was cool, but Tom Hanks' character brought the whole movie home, all right? Better movie, The Terminal or Titanic? Uh, you're talking about I Hanks? can't compare those two. <laughs> yeah, you're you're saying you don't like Titanic, so I'm wanting you to pick a movie that you like more than Titanic. Well, you an can awful pick movie. Any one of Tom. I'll, I'll like take Titanic? any of the Toy why Stories on Titanic. Why does Titanic do it for you? It's just it's your overrated. Me, it's overrated. Yeah? Yeah. I, I didn't see it when it came out. I saw it after the hype, and it didn't feel He draws her like one of his French girls? Come on. I'm just saying. It's a beautifully romantic scene. I saw the scene. scene. I saw Peter the loves scene. the violin Was it romantic? I love the violin scene. Those guys, gentlemen, it's an honor playing with you. I mean, a wonderful movie, Nate. Nah. I mean, Academy Award winner. I wonder that's if Mr. Rogers will change everyone's opinion on it. Could be. I feel Listen, like that's going to be an epic. Tom that Hanks picture of him in costume it looks incredible. Castaway, what are we doing? I'm still going Leo. I'm going Leo. Has Leo ever did a movie by himself? Yeah, Castaway was a game changer. Yeah, too. sure. I mean, we, we, I'm talking he, about by himself on an island by himself. Yeah, the Aviator, Howard Hughes, he was a by himself. Literally did a movie, did a movie called like The Beach. Uh, here's another thing. Shutter <laughs> Island. He did no, a movie. Shut, listen, <laughs> another thing about Leo, he does a lot of autobiographical films. Okay, right? so you gotta hold that against him. Hanks is yeah. playing Disney. Hanks is playing Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Hanks played Captain Phillips. Hanks played Captain Sully. <laughs> what the hell do you want from Hanks? What do you want from Hanks? Right, Woody, right. the Cowboys, a real guy. That point backfired on me, but still, you Gangs in New York, The Departed, and the Departed was a hot streak too. We got on a Google. The Revenant. Leo's, the Wolf of Wall Street. The Revenant. What's Leo's best movie? I think Gangs of New York. I got okay, Departed. What's Tom's best movie? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. I got Philadelphia. 
Okay, Philip Peter. Forrest Amazing Gump performance. And Philadelphia are both better movie. than yes. New York. Wow. It's tough. It's, t it's a tough watch. <laughs> tough watch. To deconstruct this, yeah. I think both of those movies, Philadelphia and Forrest Gump, are better than Gangs of New York. Do but what about agree? The Departed? The Departed was putting ooh. their best, best one piece of Gangs work is is head best. to head. The Come Departed on. Was. I don't know how to nail. You can't even pick a best. Everybody has seen Gilbert Grape. That's the most amazing thing I've ever watched Very in my old. life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Amazing. This is a great question. We can keep going. Johnny Depp. We'll be back Bat after Nibbler. this. This is Good Morning Football. And <laughs> this fumble was devastating for the Steelers' playoff chances. How can Pittsburgh get back into the...